We have a number of upper airway diseases, allergic conjunctivitis, allergic rhinitis, rhinosinusitis, and the nose is always involved when you have sinus disease, is a not adequately understood problem and a not adequately treated uh, condition. In fact, it's probably more than one condition. It's not just an allergic process. In fact, particularly the best way to look at it is acute rhinosinusitis, which is almost always an infectious process, the vast majority are viral, and chronic rhinosinusitis, which is not an infectious problem for the vast majority of the patients. It's a chronic inflammatory condition that we usually separate into two large piles, one those without nasal polyps and those with nasal polyps. Those with Those without nasal polyps, this inflammation can be far and away better managed than most patients have currently. Lots of people with chronic rhinosinusitis have surgery. In fact, 250 to 500,000 surgeries are done every year, which not only have morbidity associated with them, nobody wants to get sinus surgery, but it's a very expensive procedure if you look at the amount of money spent on chronic rhinosinusitis surgery. Much of it can be managed medically, and I think that has been underdone. We know much better now about the value of intranasal corticosteroids, occasional oral corticosteroids, antibiotics, intranasal irrigation or douching, which can, in fact, contain and maintain the patient in a much better clinical state. Adequate care has not been given on the medical side. I think surgery has its place, but it's for less people than we are currently using. I think because primarily it's been seen as a mechanical abnormality, that if you fix it surgically with making a hole there or whittle or fiddle with something there, you're going to improve the ventilation and therefore you're going to cure it. It's a chronic inflammatory process, often from immune dysregulation and you have to treat the patient's inflammation and the immunologic abnormalities. And if you do that, you can in fact reduce the inflammatory process. Surgery doesn't change the immune system. It's really part of the problem. There's no simple test where you can hold the patient up and say, this symptom is rhinosinusitis. It takes a history. It takes a physical, which often includes endoscopy, looking into the nose, sinus, and it takes imaging. You need to see, in fact, what the sinuses look like because there are patients who have symptoms that don't have any sinus disease, that think they have sinus disease, that are treated for sinus disease that they don't have. So that doesn't become a good outcome. So we need good subjective history. We need objective measures to document the patient have abnormal sinuses and then to follow them along with appropriate kind of diagnostic evaluations. I think uh, the primary doc usually does not have as much time to deal with chronic disease. They manage it kind of in the here and now and not take a long-term look and monitor how they're doing subsequently. So I think a respiratory specialist would be valuable. 50% of the people with chronic rhinosinusitis have underlying allergic disease, and I think an allergist would be an excellent person. An allergist is a person who deals with A, chronic disease, chronic pharmacotherapy, chronic immunologic abnormalities. So I think that would be very valuable for an allergist to be part of that team. Otolaryngologists have certainly been the major people taking care of chronic rhinosinusitis in the um, past. They certainly have the uh, abil ability and the access to doing surgical procedures, but sometimes don't spend enough time on the medical control before they go into surgery. I think what needs to be better done in the future in terms of the management of chronic rhinosinusitis is not to say, you got it, we'll fix it, which is surgery. Many of the surgeries that are done are probably not necessary because they can be managed medically. They also don't necessarily need a second surgery because the first surgery didn't work. Often the first surgery didn't work, second surgery isn't going to work either, nor the third or the fourth. So I think we need to look at the basis of the disease, the inflammation, rather than just jump into a surgical procedure.